Ladies and gentlemen, the Scarlet and Violet Teal Mask DLC is finally out, and what that means is I finally have some new toys to play with, and some stuff has come back that I've been waiting a long time to kind of build some teams with. So, I've got a really fun squad here, and I just kind of want to see how it goes. If you could, consider hitting that like button for me. It really helps out the channel. I do appreciate it. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, listen, I'll tell you what. I did not expect to have to go up against a slacking on turn one. My dude is going to lead off with the slacking. I lead off with the absolute OG face paint. Mammoth Swine looking extra furry these days. And I am actually a focus sash lead, so this is kind of fine. I just want to prioritize getting up my stealth rock. He's going to end up going for the body slam. Listen, if you've never seen a monkey body slam a meatball, you have today. And I am actually able to live that and luckily not get paralyzed in the process. So I get up my stealth rock. Uh, which is going to be super nice. And at this point, I'm thinking either he stays in, takes the truant turn, or he's going to switch out. Uh, I decided to just go for the Ice Skull Crash, kind of the safest play. I would love to get some chip on that slacking because my team is kind of hyper offensive. I don't have a whole lot of defensive switch in, so that thing is going to be a problem. But for now, it's a problem for later. So that's how I live my life. Anyway, uh, I go for the Ice Skull Crash on the Walnut switch in. Uh, obviously, this thing is kind of threatening me here with like a rapid spin or a stealth rock of their own. I decided to switch into the Ogre Pond. This is one of the new Pokemon introduced uh, in the Teal Mask. This is straight up the Mask Guy. I send out the old Ogre. Uh, I am actually running the Fire Forms. So if you're unfamiliar with how this thing works, essentially it can change its type depending on uh, the hold item mask. This one's currently wearing the Fire one, so of course, you know, it's a good time against the Fortress. He does end up setting up the Stealth Rock, and at this point I can go for my Ivy Cudgel. Uh, that move is a move that changes type depending on the mask you're wearing. Uh, it turns out the mask actually does give you a boost in stab as well. It's like an extra stab. But I go for the knockoff expecting the switch thinking ain't no way this fortress is going to stay in here. And it does. So he makes the good prediction, expects me to over predict, uh, and they go for the rapid spin there. So unfortunately, you know, Mammoth Swine basically took a fucking body slam to get that stealth rock up that did nothing. And uh, I am going to give it, at least I got the boots off of that thing, I guess. But... Uh, at this point, I can't really overpredict twice. Listen, I need that Fortress kind of taken care of because this is my only Firemon. I'm going to go uh, for that Ivy Cudgel. Go ahead and smack his ass with a big spiky stick. But it turns out Don Bozo doesn't really give a shit. Um, this is actually a kind of a fine matchup for me. So I'm thinking I don't really have a whole lot that wants to deal with Don Zozo. Uh, my team doesn't particularly like water types. I'm actually just going to end up staying in, go for that knockoff, uh, get rid of its uh, whatever it's carrying. It turned out to be the Rocky Helmet, which... Um, it's actually going to put me up in a pretty good position. Like I said, I think I'm going to go for the Waterfall. Since I'm Fire and Grass type, I'm actually not weak to that. Um, and I have the Stab Horn Leech, where I can get some reliable recovery. This thing has so much HP, I just go ahead and sap that shit straight from its mouth. And uh, it puts me well above half. So I'm, I'm able to kind of outlast this thing. And honestly, whittling this thing down, getting the chip damage on this, is going to open up the late game for me a whole lot. Because I have a whole lot of sweepers in the back. Uh, they can kind of benefit from that. So, I go for one more Horn Leech, does take care of the Don Dozo, and uh, again, I leave this matchup like around half, and this is a super fun Pokemon to work with. Anytime you can get a Mon that can kind of just switch around its types, I really just enjoy Grass Fire, just overall. Kind of a cool little fella. So, uh, now on the free switch, they decide to bring in the Iron Moth. Now, this thing is frightening. I feel like this thing's for sure going to go for some type of setup. Uh, so I decided to just go for the knockoff. We actually, I think, have a speed tire. This thing's a plus speed nature because I am. Um, so I go for the knockoff there. No, I can get some damage to the point where basically I can bring in a fast mon like my Ambipom uh, and take care of it. But it goes for the agility, which ordinarily would be extremely scary if they did not bring back the greatest monkey of all time, the Ambipom, uh, in the DLC. Of course, you guys know I love using Ambipom, and this is exactly why. That thing does set up the agility. It hits extremely hard. My mo my team is not bulky, uh, but I do have uh, the boy Hand E Jobs, the absolute goat. I love Ambipom, hate playing against it, come in. Uh, we can basically just do some pimp slapping. So obviously fake out with that priority. Should be enough to take care of this thing. I'm actually gonna go for the Terra Normal, thinking if the fake out doesn't take care of it, I basically then need to, I, I kind of am outsped by everything. So I go for that Terra Normal with the Silk Scarf, should be enough easily to take care of this thing. Um, and that's kind of, um, kind of dodging a bullet there. I knew this thing was going to want to set up. It does suck to lose uh, my Ogre Pond. Kind of just looking at the rest of the matchup is really good for stuff like that fortress. But I decided it was kind of just worthwhile to, to get that knockoff and just get that chip damage. So I put the diamond on my fucking head. We are blinged out out here. Hand E jobs is iced out. And uh, the fake out does knock it out. Critical hit likely does not matter. Uh, and down goes the Iron Moth. So that is amazing. Super scary threat out of the way. But... We get the big boy coming back in. <laughs> it's lacking. This thing comes in here. 
loafing around like a like a loaf of bread and I do want to conserve the amber pump. So here is the plan. I basically have nothing that can switch into this, which I mean realistically there ain't shit that can switch into a choice banded slacking in general, but I decide looking at the Pokemon that he has left, I'm kind of just going to go into uh, the Alolan Ninetales and just kind of sack this thing off to be able to uh, bring in my plan B, which you're going to see soon. So Snoky Doggy comes in and this thing uh, makes its other things here for the Aurora Veil. We have the Light Clay. Would be really nice if I was able to take this Body Slam, but it's definitely too much. And uh, that is a lot. I mean, really, you can't expect much. But I make it snow just for the aesthetic out here. Snowing on a sunny day. Never seen that shit before. But now I decide to bring in the Hamster. This Morpeko thing has always been a really interesting mon for me. It gets rapid spin, so I'm thinking here's the plan. I go for a rapid spin on the turn that this thing has to loaf around. Um, I then get a speed boost and be able to outspeed this thing and just get some chip damage to the point where Ambipom uh, can take care of it later or whatever I have in the back like the Como. So I get that rapid spin. Stealth Rock being away is nice because now Mamoswine can basically come in uh, and I can threaten stuff like with an Ice Shard so I don't die to the Stealth Rock on switch in. I go full on hangry mode, and uh, now we're just dark type and looking like an evil bitch, and I go, <laughs> I go for the knockoff here. Uh, basically get rid of that choice band, I figured it doesn't really matter, I wasn't going to be able to Oko this thing with any attack, so I opt for the knockoff, it does enough chip, uh, and should help me out no matter what. So, uh, Morpeko honestly does exactly what it needed to do. I got the chip there, I got rid of the stealth rock, and now it's time to bring in the absolute goat. Como O is back baby, and I haven't used this thing in literally forever and it's got himself a new little strategy here you can notice this thing is carrying the loaded dice and it gets access to scale shot now so we're about to see what this bad boy is made of he's looking way more metallic in this game and honestly I just really love this mon uh, I have not played with it competitively a lot but uh, the truant slacking seems like a good time to dragon dance as I go full cloak of inv invisibility on his ass I don't know what the game glitches here and just makes me invisible which is hilarious broken game thank you game freak but <laughs> Uh, I get up the Dragon Dance, which is great, and now I'm thinking, honestly, I can just go for that Scale Shot, and Oswald is set up in an honestly pretty good position here. So, Scale Shot with the Loaded Dice, guaranteed hit at least four times with the Stab, plus a Dragon Dance. That thing is not living. I just throw all my fucking Metal-ass Scales at him, and come O grabs himself uh, his first kill. So, uh, down goes the Slacking. That thing, again, super scary, but uh, at least you get the we get the payoff with its ability there. We do also get the Speed Boost with that scale shot. So now I'm sitting at plus two, and I'm feeling like I'm on top of the world out here. He does have uh, mons like the Sloking and the Fortress left, but honestly, I feel like I can kind of, uh, I can win those 1v1s. So, uh, in comes Sloking. He's got the fucking shell on his head, ready to party, looking like a dunce cap. I go for that scale shot, uh, and we are gonna actually see what this shit's made of here. So look it, I hit three times. I'm talking four times, grabs the critical hit, and then five to finish it off. That is actually, extremely amazing you get you basically are able to roll a critical hit chance five times if you hit five so it's kind of like shit's gonna happen eventually and down goes the sloking would have actually been able to live that if it wasn't for um <laughs> if it wasn't for that crit but that is why we play the game boys skill shot skill shot is amazing and uh come out here doing the damn thing so now in comes the fortress um no stealth rock to hurt it but i'm feeling like a close combat after a dragon dance should be able to knock this thing out Big old metal punching bag seems pretty satisfying. Down goes the fortress. I am losing hella defense out here, but in the process, just gaining. Um, I, I mean, I have a, enough speed to outspeed everything. Uh, and what with fortress, you know, and slow king gone, all that's going to be left is the Hisuian electrode. It was actually just a, a wooden punching bag. So a couple of balls going down. Uh, that is going to be the end of the match. I got a little bit of luck on my side. Overall, just a really fun kind of squad to mess around with. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. I've got some new teams in the works with all the new DLC mons. If there's anything you would like to see me uh, to kind of take advantage of, if there's any mons that got access to new moves and want me to build around, let me know. Uh, but anyways, I will see you guys next time. Peace out.